Wendy Sabsky, and I am talk three of four about mimulus fringens. And so most flowering plants are hermaphroditic, and yet the proportion of seeds fertilized by self and outcross pollen varies widely, both among species and even among populations within species. And so this intraspecific variation in mating systems can influence the genetic structure of populations the extent of gene flow, effective population size, and the expression of inbreeding depression. And so this figure here um, shows the among population variation in mating system for 741 populations of 105 species. And so the x-axis is outcrossing rate, and this was based on progeny arrays using Ritland's MLTR. And so each line on the graph is a species, and each point on a line represents a population within that species. And so species at this end of the figure um, have populations that primarily self-fertilize, while species at this end of the figure have populations that primarily outcross. And then several species have striking variation in mating system ranging from predominantly selfing to mixed mating to nearly exclusive outcrossing. And so what are the causes of intraspecific variation in outcrossing rate? There are two main mechanisms that I'll be focusing on. And so first, variation in the pollination environment includes ecological factors that influence the proportion of self and outcross pollen deposited on stigmas. And so second, Heritable traits influence the extent of self-pollen receipt. The pollination environment may vary in pollinator abundance, the composition of pollinating fauna, and pollinator foraging patterns. And so an example of this, Brune and Sweet found that in columbine populations, among population variation in outcrossing is correlated with the abundance of hawk moths. And so in their figure, the x-axis is hawk moth abundance, the y-axis is outcrossing rate, and each point in the figure represents a population of columbine. And so here in this study, they found that in populations where hawk moths are more abundant, these primarily have a higher outcrossing rate. However, in populations where hawk, moth are, hawk moths are um, more rare, these populations tend to have a lower outcrossing rate, and therefore a higher stealthing rate. And so heritable traits may also influence the mating system. These include aspects of floral morphology, such as flower size, and also um, includes the number of flowers that a plant produces in a given day. And so an example of this, Dart et al. found that in Chemisianopsis, among population variation in outcrossing is correlated with corolla width. And so in their figure here, the x-axis is corolla width, which was measured in millimeters, and the y-axis is the proportion of seeds that were produced through outcross pollen. And here, each point on the graph corresponds to a population of Chemisianopsis. And so in populations of Chemisianopsis, where the corollas tend to be wider, these have a higher proportion of outcross seeds. And then by contrast, in populations where corollas tend to be narrower, these populations have a lower proportion of outcross. And so in nature, the relative contributions of the pollination environment and heritable traits that influence the mating system are often confounded. And so as a result, there is a critical need for common garden studies that tease apart the ecological and genetic factors that influence the proportion of selfing and outcrossing. And so I am studying mating system evolution in monkey flower mimulus ringens. It is a hermaphroditic perennial plant that is native to wetlands in eastern and central North America. It is primarily bumblebee pollinated, and plants produce purple flowers, each of which lasts for only half a day. The species is wholly self-compatible, and monkey flower exhibits a mixed mating system. And so this figure here depicts a bumblebee that is approaching a flower, searching for nectar, the white on the top of its head is pollen 
that it brought over from a flower it visited previously. And so this part of the flower is called the stigma, and this is the female part of the flower, and so this is where pollen will be deposited. And then these are the anthers, which are the male parts of the flowers, and so these contain the pollen grains. And so as the bumblebee probes the flower, its head will first contact the stigma and then the anthers. And so now I'd like to show you a bit what that might look like. It's <laughs> <laughs> my cute blue baby. All right. So, um, mimulus flowers open and the anthers to hiss or release pollen around 5 a.m. And um, the bilobed stigma is sexually receptive upon flower opening. And then during pollination, thousands of pollen grains can be deposited, and these germinate and develop pollen tubes, which grow down the style to fertilize up to 4,500 ovules per ovary. And so, um, sorry, um, we are studying selfing rate variation in 13 natural populations in Ohio. However, so far we have quantified selfing rates for six populations by genotyping progeny arrays at eight microsatellite loci using Ritland's MLTR. And so based on these data that we have so far, in the wild, selfing rate varies widely among populations. And so this map shows the proportion of selfing and outcrossing for those six populations in Ohio. And so um, there is no association between selfing rate and geographic location which suggests the potential for local adaptation in the mating system. And population selfing rates ranged from 20% in this population to 65% in this population. And so floral display also varies widely among populations. Um, floral display just refers to the number of flowers that a plant produces in a given day. And so some of the variation in selfing rate may reflect differences in the proportion of among flower selfing. And so this figure shows the mean, floor, uh, mean daily floral display for each of those 13 wild populations of mimulus. And so floral display size ranges from 1.5 flowers per day in this population to almost six flowers per day in this population. And so outcross pollen is received when a pollinator moves from a flower on one plant to a flower on another plant. However, pollinator movements within a flower, as well as between flowers on the same plant, transfer self-pollen. Populations that have large floral displays are likely to have a higher proportion of self-fertilization um, since self-pollen will often be moved among flowers on the same plant. And these populations also vary markedly in flower size. And so in the next talk, Randy Mitchell will describe the among population variation in floral traits, and he will also show how these traits are associated with population selfing rates. And so the question becomes, are these differences in selfing rate amongst populations due to ecological factors, such as the pollination environment, or are they due um, to an, or are they due to an underlying genetic basis? And so to answer this question, this field season, I will raise plants from seeds harvested from these natural populations. I will measure heritable floral design and floral display traits throughout the flowering period. And then I will also establish two replicate common gardens. Um, and so throughout these gardens, I will allow pollinators to forage naturally. And then by harvesting fruits and genotyping the progeny, I hope to relate uh, population selfing rates to either the pollination environment or to heritable traits. Thank you very much. I will answer any questions you guys may have. Um, I think mainly I have a feeling that 
floral display will be more of an um, environmental aspect, um, not so much that pollinator visitation will influence it, but just um, that there's an environmental component potentially. Um, I have a feeling that um, we'll see more genetic um, and more of an underlying genetic basis in floral traits, but I'm interested to see what's gonna, what's gonna come out here. Yes. So you showed us those pie charts of variation in selfing rate, mm -hmm. and then on the next slide, variation in floral display. Right. But I couldn't keep track yeah. of populations to try and match them up. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in the next talk, we're yes. gonna relate right. these things. <laughs> yep. So that's why I kept them on separate slides. Ah. Uh, yes. There's a whole range of demographic factors that have been shown quite clearly to influence among population variation in selfing rate. I wonder if you looked at population size or plant density or factors like that for those populations. Um, so Randy <laughs> is uh, more equipped to answer this question. Would you mind? Uh, we don't have, we've only got the, it's too preliminary now to really study, okay. but I've got those numbers, okay. but we, do, we don't have the y-axis yet. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Um, I was just curious, uh, the variation in selfing rate is really interesting. I was wondering if there was anything Potential variation in the cost of selfing if the strength of inbreeding depression varies <laughs> populations? Um, so, we do have preliminary data on inbreeding depression. And so, these preliminary data show that inbreeding depression ranges from 0.3 to 0.9. Um, but we're still kind of looking into that and looking into the reasons. Um, so, we should have more information coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Woo. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. <laughs>